doggy, you can see down below this is a long episode. We have so much jammed in. We're covering a ton of matchups. We're making fun of uh, our own internal Packer fans. We've got starts of the week, but we all know why you're here. You're worried about me from my boom boom last week. I'm out there naked on a freighter. Stay tuned to the end of the show. Find out what happens next. Today's episode of the show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield provides a continuously invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, available at walmart.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. <laughs> it's football time tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> that it's football time reminded me of like, you know when like a band is playing their hit, and they've played it so many times. Oh, you got to change it up a little that bit. That they yeah. mi- they mix up a little bit of the cadence, and yep. it, it sounds a little bit different. It's, it's you rift. Yeah, man. Well, he was excited. We are Damn. all going to this game tonight as a company, and we are going to walk strong over Al Borland, our mm. producer, <laughs> who will be lying on the ground as a giant Packers fan. Well, welcome to the show, Thursday, October 28th, the Fantasy Footballers. Al is a bona fide Packer fan, uh, has been forever. Um, I mean, to the degree that at one point, I think his his old house used to be, uh, he had hue lights everywhere, and, and on game day, the house was like just, it was like the house dressed up as as a Packer player. Well, that's fun. We would set up one of those outdoor pop-ups, but it was a Packer one, and we did it in our living room. Yeah, I mean. It, it, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That's a joke, right? That's real. Oh my goodness! I'll tweet a picture of it later. <laughs> yeah, so so real legit Packer fan. Now, we obviously we don't go to a lot of games because right. I used to have season tickets. Mike used to as well. I did too. Um, yeah, we all did, and and that was super fun. But ever since we started the show, we need to take in all the content, all the games. We got to talk about it on Monday, so we don't have season tickets. So we're always eyeballing like the 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 island games for the Cardinals. Like if they're at home on a Monday or Thursday or Sunday night, those are the games we can can sneak into. So we're like, hey, Thursday night, Al Borland's Packers. Little do did we know that it would be a matchup of the two, you know, two of the winningest teams in the NFC. However, I want people to weigh in on this. Like, what is our obligation as Cardinal fans? Like, we paid for a suite, right? Like, we're bringing everybody from the company. And like, there's already going. The like, Green Bay travels way too well. Mm-hmm. Like, there's already going to be a problem tonight. And here we are. We're going to stroll in on our dime with a man dressed in green and yellow. It's not right. So I mean, do do we have an obligation to like leave I, him I, behind? Yeah, I think <laughs> I think it's fine because like, do we have to defend you, him if he's attacked? He he won't be attacked. He's just going to be really depressed. And a person wearing green and yellow who is sad? Oh. I, you look real stupid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> real stupid. Yeah. And again, I, green and yellow. Yeah. I I I mean, especially without... That uh, is his Devonta, voice. Devonta. <laughs> it's me. It's me. It's Al Borland. Borland. Um, you know, without Devontae <laughs> Adams, without Alan Lazard, it makes me so much more scared of losing. Because of what the dunk will feel like. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> like when the when the really short guy dunks over you, that's worse than when the... Yes. You know, Boom shakalaka! Oh, come on. Well, we'll see what happens. I mean, the Cardinals, you're sitting pretty, and then all of a sudden we got news this morning that J.J. Watt's out for the year. Oh, yeah, that was cool. So I've been in a... It's always something. It's all, It reminds me of when Matthew went out for the car. Anyway, anyway, this is not Cardinals hour. We've got so much to talk about. Never not working on today's show. Very excited about this discussion today. News and notes, the fantasy forecast, all the matchups, or half the matchups, and then starts of the week, and Jason continues the uh, with season one of Boom Boom Kicker on Netflix, continues today. 
Yes, it does. We have a Halloween show tomorrow. I don't know if I've ever said the word quite like that, though. It's Hall- Halloween? Is that right? Halloween. Okay. This is this Halloween. This is Halloween. 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 Halloway. Halloween. Um, Halloween? You want to you- watch it. That's why I say is it ho- Oh, it's, are you ha- trying to like are you branding it for yourself? I'm thinking about it. Yeah, th- at their house they celebrate <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe, click the bell, get tomorrow's episode. We've done a lot of different costumes over the years. Brooksy, what was last year? Was last year the Chris Goblin? No, that was the year before. Oh, okay. Um gosh, last year I know Mike was I was Adam Gaze. Adam Gaze. Yeah. Uh, one sec, one sec. I'll I'll check. I mean, this I mean, is that's all It's amazing remembers. that we just don't remember. Well, this I is like there's a lot of us that were here. It was just last year, so like I we, know who I was. Who were you? I'm that's picturing a, the other costumes, cool. past ones. Um, Andy great. was Cliff Kingsbury. Oh, uh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And Jason was Rodrigo. Oh, oh you were Blankenship. Good. That's right. Yeah. Boom, boom. So that's tomorrow, and uh, you can find our community of 27,000 incredible human beings at jointhefoot.com. You get a bonus weekly show, premium perks. We had a good time on Spotify Green Room yesterday. I mean, the season is – we're in it. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, let's, let's move on. Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right. We've been doing these every week and have been getting an increasingly large amount of feedback that it that people have benefited a lot from our kind of digging in, digging deeper, never not working segments every week. Love it. Trying to take some of the things that we, we look at and go one layer deeper. Um... So today I want to talk about, you know, we've talked about the off season so much about passing pie, right? Like how much volume an offense gets. And, mm-hmm. you know, we talked about the Ravens and then we've, we use the term and the reference to target share a lot, which is, you know, the, it's, it's not a complicated stat, right? It's the percentage of, of targets in an offense. And you want a high one. Yeah. And so, um, the other day in the office, I kind of brought up, I said, you know, target share, can be deceptive as well, where it's a piece of the puzzle. And I think the best way to look at it is truly as a broad brush painted across a bigger picture of what a wide receiver's value is, because we have seen both sides of the coin. So I wanted to dig in a little deeper. I wanted to look at developing a more holistic view when it comes to target share and what you should look at. And so that's what we did. Yeah, Kyle, the Borgogan dug into some numbers I wanted to say, I wanted to look at and say, you know, through the first seven weeks, what is the story? What does target share represent? Does it represent a very uh, strong correlation to the best wide receivers out there? And it's interesting. Like your first uh, three guys in target share in the NFL right now, it's Debo Samuel, 34%, Devontae Adams, 34%, Cooper Cup, 34%. And looking good so far. Those three are like bulletproof top wide receivers. Like that's not changing. Um, their point per game rank is very close to where they finish target share percentage wise. What's interesting is the next three on the list all have a completely different story to them. It's Brandon Cooks at 31.2%, Terry McLaurin at 29%, and DJ Moore at 29%. And their points per game rank. You know, where they're three, four, and, or I'm sorry, where they're four, five, and six in target share, their actual rank is 21, 16, and 15. So obviously they have a different story. You know, Brandon Cooks has General Mills at quarterback. He, the Texans are 28th in pass success rate. Um, they have the second fewest fantasy points per reception in the NFL. That was a that's a number and a, a metric that we haven't really looked at a lot. But fantasy points per reception is interesting to me. Um, Terry McLaurin has dealt with a <clears throat> stinky Heine. Bad Heine. <laughs> stinky Heine. Uh, Heine is willing to throw it a lot. Heineke. Mm-hmm. I can't even I can't call him Heine. <laughs> it's just too weird. But one of the things we looked at the other day was the fact that Terry McLaurin, all by himself. 48% of his targets are contested. Like Taylor Heineke 
is doing the thing that we kind of joke about that quarter quarterbacks should do, which is when in doubt, just chuck it to your best player, no matter what the coverage is, no matter what's happening. Like 50% of the time, he probably shouldn't throw the ball to Terry McLaurin, like by disagree. <laughs> well, yeah. And then you, that's fair to disagree. But I mean, like when you, when you say a quarterback goes through his reads and then makes a judgment call on what he sees, like 48% of the time, that judgment call by any other quarterback would be not throw the ball to Terry McLaurin. So it matters if your if your targets are contested, right? On whether or not that target share is good for the player, because even though, you know, Terry McLaurin's great, sometimes that 50 50 ball hits. He's finished at wide receiver three, four, and five. That's why it's a 50 50. Some weeks it doesn't. Wide receiver 57 45, 51 64. So, oh. He's got four bad games and three good ones. Oh. 50-50. It's going to balance a good out. Game's coming. Didn't he get Isn't he banged up right now? Yes. Yeah. Um the other name, you know, DJ Moore, it's been a 50-50 story for him too. In 16 career games without Christian McCaffrey, his target share rises from 22 to 27%. But he averages the exact same receptions per game, right? Cuz target quality diminishes for him so it's not as simple as oh man the target share goes way up no the production's the same because the quality of the target goes down so um which begs the question when we look at this metric like would you rather have dj moore with a 29 percent target share from same darnold or chris godwin with a 19 percent target share from a quarterback in tom brady that's completing you know a far higher percentage of his passes sure. Because it, it, even if you're a great wide receiver, there's only so much you can do. Didn't DJ Moore have a game where he had a 30% catch rate the other day? I believe I think two games ago. Like that, yeah. It was like 34%. So I think it's pretty interesting um, when you look at the, the broad picture. And I don't know if you guys have different thoughts about that. But you know, you have to take target share and then combine it with who's throwing them the ball. Are the targets contested? Are they a 50-50 target? And how close to the line of scrimmage are they? You know, we always talk about Hunter Renfro and we talk about, you know, the value of a target to a slot wide receiver versus an outside wide receiver. So what what are you guys' thoughts? No, it's it's certainly interesting that like everything in fantasy football needs context. It needs extra context. And that's why we're like when it's just you know, you know, like rankings on a page where that's this is why we talk about, you know, in the in the draft season, the ultimate draft case, like we have these tiers because it there's no real context between between the number two running back I would draft and the number six running back I would draft they they might be four spots apart but they might in projected points be very very similar so there's really not a difference to us we slightly prefer one but yeah you always need the the, the context of these things and and that's why what I like about you know the show we have like a, basically an hour long show five days a week and we we try to dig into those things because target shared it does matter oh it absolutely it, it, it does. matters but like maybe maybe there with this discussion maybe there is a better way that we can try and and get all of these things you know target share uh the, the actual pass volume of the quarterback the average depth of targets you know uh, completion percentage. Yeah, just all of those things. In, I got to develop a new metric. I hear yeah, you loud I, and clear. Yeah, yeah. Get to work. Get off of the. Stop doing the show. I'll, go I'll get to see work. You guys later. Yeah, take take off. Get to the lab. Well, it's interesting because you know a lot of the Twitter sphere and you know the hot take community and world. You know, you can say the same sentence. You can say, "Well, you have to start. You have to start Cooper Cup. He's got a thirty percent target share. He's number three on the year." And you can say. Well, you have to start Brandon Cooks. He's got a 30% target share. And then he's 21st on the year. So, yeah, context is king. I think we try to bring that up. It's not, yeah. this is not an indictment on target share altogether. It is just kind of a deeper look at that one specific area. And I wanted to know as well when I looked into this are all the highest target share guys just the top 12 receivers? Sure. Like, I didn't know what we would find. Yeah, it was very interesting of those. You know, four, five, and six of of not being anywhere close to the players that the top three are. Um, how would you weigh in though about the DJ Moore, Chris Godwin? Genuinely, like those Who would two I players. Prefer? It's yeah. a really, really good question. When I looked at that at first, I was I was thinking, well, Chris Godwin. I mean, 
now, now with the Antonio Brown yeah, injury, more context, <laughs> it, more context. I think the target share goes up, but if it's if it stayed the same between Chris Godwin and DJ Moore, I I would probably still go with DJ Moore um, because I think that the um, you know you see the biggest problem on this list is Brandon Cooks because Davis Mills is the worst of the three bad quarterbacks. I. I think Sam Darnold has been horrific, just terrible. You watch him, and it's just no excuse anymore. But I actually – I think he will be better than what he's been the last three games, as seen by how he was the first three games, especially once Christian McCaffrey comes back. Yeah, makes sense. Anything else to add, Mike? Nope. I mean, Chris or, or DJ Moore gets Atlanta, so let's let's get a fourth good game here. Get back to 50-50? Yep. All right, get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working. With head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. Well, the big news yesterday afternoon, right before we went live on Green Room, was the Texans trading away veteran running back Mark Ingram, sending him back home to the Saints. Sean Payton's already come out and said that you're going to see him. So, what that means? Not much. I mean, we, we did debate this and discuss this on Green Room, so I want to get back into it for everybody. You know, when the trade happens, everyone wants to find the opportunity. And do I need to step on the gas and, and acquire Philip Lindsay, David Johnson, Mark Ingram, renewed interest? Give me the broad brush here. The broadest brush is you don't need to worry about any of the three of them. That's the broadest o overall brush if you get out the finer brush and you look at the details what the expectation here is that Philip Lindsay who wasn't playing that many snaps but was actually out carrying uh David Johnson is going to take over the first and second down role David Johnson's carries will go up and he is the passing work guy the offense hopefully will get better with Tyrod Taylor but he doesn't throw it to the running back a lot so you kind of have a, still you've got a bad offense You've got a guy in Philip Lindsay who's carrying 2.3 yards of carry, and David Johnson's probably going to be still underutilized. I'd put him first of the list as far as uh, the Texans. And then when it comes to Mark Ingram, you have a, a poor man's Latavius Murray going mm -hmm. into this year where he's going to spell Kamara. He's in an offense that obviously will score more than the Texans, so touchdown opportunity could be there. But I don't think he's much more than an insurance back, and really he is there to keep Alvin Kamara healthy. That's why they made this trade. They cannot possibly give Kamara the work he's seen the last two weeks and then have him at the end of the season. Even with Tony Tony Brooks, James Jones Jr. that they had earlier in the year, Kamara was 20-plus opportunities a game. So it's like even with a compliment, you don't need to worry if you're a Kamara manager. You should be no, happy no, no. that he's going to stay yes. healthy. And to be, tr to be honest, based on what I saw of Ingram, the player, like I don't – I don't think him and Latavius are very different. Like it's a much better offensive line. So if you need to, you know, he's in the P Ryan category, probably maybe slightly below and which is mostly insurance or emergency start. It's funny. They, basically they're in the same order that they were before the trade. It's like, eh, I don't want any of them. Uh, Ingram, David Johnson, Philip Lindsay. That's yeah. how they were before the trade. <laughs> I think David Johnson's interesting. Like we've had games where just last week, uh, seven carries. He had six carries in week two, five carries in week four. And if those if those get near 10 and he's still seeing the target share that he sees, and I get different quarterback, but in week one, three receptions, and including a receiving touchdown from Tyrod Taylor, uh, that David Johnson becomes an interesting, you know, possibly high-end running back three. Uh, and if the And if the numbers rise where they could, David Johnson can be a running back too. That's I know you guys completely disagree with that, but the volume drives fantasy football. And if he, I mean, you have two games where he has five receptions. And if you have five receptions and 10 carries, you're an interesting fantasy player. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, again, I mean, I think I said it yesterday. We saw Mark Ingram with 16, 17, 18 carries. So that's a, that's a lot of volume to split. The, the, like that all won't just go to Philip Lindsay, right? There will. But be... my point is that you saw 18 carries in irrelevance for a single player, so that's possible too. Yeah, like a player got 18 carries and you, and he was on every waiver wire in every league that I was in. Sure, but if you get 18 carries and, the, and, and four the receptions, yeah, I agree. That's very different. 
Yeah, I, I do, but I don't know what the team's doing. I don't know if the team is doing this because they want to give Philip Lindsay more work as a free agent acquisition by this staff, right? They inherited David Johnson. They signed Philip Lindsay. So I would spend what? Nothing, me personally, but what would you invest on David Johnson, Mike? Yeah, Oh, okay, Mike, yeah, you're the best answer. Just a couple. Just okay. a couple, Fab. Tyrod's returning to, uh, well, he returned from injured reserve. So there's hope that Tyrod comes back soon. They did look better with him. That was something you brought up yesterday, Mike, and, and should, we should be aware of. If you move the offense, then you get a goal line chance. If mm -hmm. you get a goal line chance, you have a chance of being relevant. This sucks. Bruce Arians said Antonio Brown's dealing with a sprain near his heel. Could be a longer-term injury. He didn't insinuate any chance of him coming back this week. Said maybe after the bye, maybe longer. Yeah, the, the worst part of this news, they, they obviously have not put him on IR yet. So that says that because the bye week is, you know, three weeks away, he can still come back in three weeks, be a game earlier than going on IR. So it's a good sign that I think he might come back after the bye week. But the bad news is that the Bucks are great. This is a, their, their goal is not to make the playoffs. Their goal is to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. And they need Antonio Brown healthy. That's their goal. They are not worried about bringing him back for for anything but the playoffs. So uh, I have a little different thought on that. Okay, do tell. Which is simply that it, this is a different ball game this year a little bit. Which, with only one bye week? With one bye week. So there is a little bit more pressure on teams to – I mean, I agree with the, the overall sense that, yeah, I mean, why not both? Why don't they, <laughs> sure. why don't they take the bye week and, and – hold them out, you know, and be able to do both. But well, I do wonder what it will mean for teams' competitiveness towards the end of the year. Like, it has to be good for fantasy, right, if teams do not – if they're competing for one spot. Yeah, the the one buy and the extra playoffs mean that more teams will be competing at the end of the year. That's great. Obviously, the Bucks want them back as soon as possible. But if it, if there is ever the, the situation where it's like, we think he's ready to go, but he still has a chance of re-aggravating this injury and making it long-term, that's where I believe they'll 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 err on the other side. If if they knew he would be healthy, they'd bring him back this week. Two games, then the bye. So the next three weeks, you will not have Antonio Brown. Correct. And um, the and the worst part is because he's not an IR. If you've got a team, <laughs> we we all like everyone around the studio has Antonio Brown in a league, and we can't put him in our IR slot because he's doubtful. Yeah, he's just doubtful until they finally rule him out. Rob Gronkowski will play in week eight. Debo, Samuel, didn't practice on Wednesday. Um, Kyle Shanahan came out and says he expects him to play. Uh, George Kittle's expected back not this week, but next week against Arizona. That's good news. Jarvis Landry didn't practice on Wednesday, dealing with a knee injury unrelated to the MCL injury. Uh-oh. Um, That's not great. Yeah, they didn't. One of you guys brought up him limping off of the field. Yes. So this is a new limp, not an old limp? Mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. It's a new one. <sighs> he came out today and said he plans on playing still. The Ooh. player did? Yeah. He yeah. said he's feeling better and plans on playing. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Worth noting. Players play. Is he like uh, going to do the Odell Beckham thing where he's like, I hope to be a game day decision? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike White's going to start a quarterback for the Jets, not Joe Flacco. Mike, are you happy to have another namesake starting in the NFL? Uh yes, there. Look, the I'm tired of the uh of people with the name Mike or Michael being underrepresented in the world. Mm. There's just a few of us, right? <laughs> like it's, I, you're the only one I know until this one. Yes, exactly. And now this one's just like a poor man's version of you because it, it sounds is. like you're saying your name wrong. It's Mike White. Yeah, <laughs> just I like wish Elmer I Fudd says your name <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Mike, the fantasy hitman, White. <laughs> I mean, like, how many Michaels were in your class? Twelve? You I don't know. <laughs> yeah. How many boys were in my class? That's the question. <laughs> That's right. Mike, Mike, Chris, Mike, Mike, Chris, Chris, Mike, Mike. Uh, Marquez Valdez Scaling traveled with the team, no official status for tonight, although indications are that they're going to try to get him out there. I mean, they need him. I don't I, know, though. I don't think he would travel with the team if he's not playing. That's my official stance. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins expected to play. And then J.J. Watt, the devastating news for Arizona fans. Dislocated shoulder. Uh, I watched the play. It happened when he was chasing down Davis Mills. He's going to have surgery. He's likely to miss the rest of the year. Cool. Hey, yeah. we got 
seven good games. We did. Thank you for your service, GJ. Yeah, I was really on the fence about muting every person that said, yeah, you should have just expected this. This is what happens. I mean, no. You, you think I did it? No, <laughs> I mean, I, I expected it. I we just said hope. on the show yesterday, the sh- we're waiting for the shoe to drop, yep. and then like five hours later, it drops. He was the number 10 defensive lineman on Pro Football Focus's uh, rankings. Mm-hmm. Now he's now he's not playing. Yep. So uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by our friends at Sleeper. Uh, the leader in breaking news alerts, even if the breaking news hurts you, like emotionally, it right. will. They'll send it through anyway. You can't filter by emotion, so you will get all the news. Uh, and you can do that by grabbing the app and subscribing to the channel. Before we jump into the forecast, I want to thank today's sponsor, Disco. Fellas, you need to take care of your skin. I know there's a lot. I'm a manly man and I don't do that. Stop it. Stop it. Take care of yourself. I take, love dry, itchy skin. Like, take uncomfortable care skin. of your skin. I, I like to look bad. I <laughs> cannot stand. I, I, I'm going to use, I'm gonna use a, a word. It might trigger you. I need to moisturize my face. Whoa. Like a dry face is the absolute worst. And Disco is they're helping take care of you. It's a clean skincare brand based in Austin, Texas. They are products that are created specifically for male skin issues like under eye bags. Uh, guilty as charged with the under eye bags. Like the dark circles, acne, razor burn, oily skin. Disco products are easy to use. They're effective. They're affordable. They take the guesswork out of taking care of your skin. If you're looking to start a skin skincare routine for the first time, the Disco Starter Set is a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer out there. That it's incredibly simple. Uh, it's a convenient way to upgrade the appearance of your skin in three simple steps with just 60 seconds a day. Fellas, please take care of your skin, and Disco is going to help you do it. If you want to check out Disco and try their incredible skincare products for yourself, we have a special offer for fantasy footballers listeners. Go to letsdisco.com and enter the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout for 30% off your first order. That's letsdisco.com, discount code FOOTBALLERS for 30% off your first order. Thank you, Disco. And we want to thank Upstart. If you dread looking at your credit card statements, worrying about you know the, the interest, you're not alone. The weight of debt can be crippling, but Upstart can help you on your path to financial freedom. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online, whether you're paying off credit cards or consolidating high-interest debt, funding a personal expense. There are over a million people that have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart considers other factors like your income, your current employment, and credit history to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You could check your rate without impacting your credit score in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. You can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash footballers. That's Upstart.com slash footballers. Don't forget to use our URL. Let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to Upstart.com slash footballers. Fantasy Forecast. One quick update for Thursday night. You already knew it, but Devontae Adams will not be available. Didn't get through the COVID protocols. There was some rumors yesterday that even though he didn't travel, he could still take a separate flight and get there. Not going to happen. All right. The Carolina Panthers at 3-4 and four take on the 3-3 three and three Atlanta Falcons. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here. Falcons minus three over under 45 and a half. It has been uh, two teams moving in different directions. Carolina's lost four consecutive games. Atlanta's won two straight. Kyle Pitts has leveled up. Matt Ryan's looked a lot better than he did to start the year. And so, you know, in this matchup here, you have Atlanta at home favored. Uh, Jason, yesterday on our Green Room show, you mentioned the... Uh, we, we were asking a Halloween-themed question <laughs> of... Who are you most afraid to play this week? And you brought up Cordell Patterson. So Yeah, it's tough because he's locked in your lineup. He's been too good to bench him. But I do think you should manage your expectations. If you look at his, um, you know, he, he's really been special in the passing game. And in this last week was nice because you saw a lot more carries. He, he overtook the lead dog role in the carry count. But he had two receptions this last week. That was his lowest since week one. And the only common factor there is that Russell Gage was – 
in week one and was now back healthy, actually out there. So Kyle Pitts has really leveled up. I mean, this dude, they are mm, leveled you, up. They stopped pretending he's a tight end. They, they, I mean, they are lining him everywhere up in in the field except in line because they're like, <laughs> why would we do that? He's just a really gargantuan wide receiver. So between him, Calvin Ridley being back, and Russell Gage, that means that I think that the receiving work opportunity will be smaller for Cordero Patterson this matchup, specifically against the Carolina Panthers. Look, the Carolina Panthers are, what, they're basically, they've won half their games, lost half their games, about that. And that's exactly what they should be, because their defense is great, their offense is terrible. So I, I don't love the matchup on the ground against the number one ranked rush defense for fantasy purposes. So pump the brakes, or if you've got a monster team, it is possible because people who picked up Cordero Patterson were off the waivers. It is possible you have just a a great um, you know running back room. In which case, I could see benching him, but more than likely not. But I don't think it's going to be a great week. Full bench for Mike Davis, then. Yeah, yeah. Like I'd I'd rather play David Johnson than Mike Davis. Are we going to get the Calvin Ridley we thought we were going to get at any point during this season? No. I think we'll have games of it. I mean, there's going to be games where he comes through and has I, – I don't think we're going to end up with the Calvin Ridley that we drafted. Like Because what you thought was – That was, was top every, five. Yeah, it was, was an every week star. But, you know, he's had – his last four games, he's been double-digit targets. Yes. So he's going to come through with a big yardage and touchdown game at some point. Yeah, he's still great play. So don't, don't hear my uh, – my negativity that I think Calvin Ridley is a bad fantasy player now. He's just – the hope was top five. The hope was we would see the trend continue of when Julio is out, Calvin Ridley's a 100-yard receiver, and that just hasn't happened. Well, the Falcons did give up four touchdown passes last week to Tua Tungavailoa. So, Sam Darnold, are you getting back on track? It's a good matchup. Yeah. 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 Uh <sighs> I'm I mean, not the team going needs to. to run more even after they ran a lot, oh, according yeah. to Matt Rule. We need to establish the establishing yes. of the run. Uh, no, I'm not playing Sam Darnold. I don't blame you if you do, but I'm not going to do it. Chuba Hubbard is currently our RB18 on the week. Last week, disappointment against New York, 30th ranked on 17 opportunities. Yeah, I mean, the opportunities were there. Um, the, yeah, you got a slightly... Slightly fewer carries, but more targets uh, last week. So he's a low-end RB2, someone that you can flex in a pinch, but he's not special. Kyle Pitts, always yes. in your lineup. Is he the number one dynasty tight end as of today? I know it's early to uh, say it and kind of just hot takey to say it, but I mean, I've seen it talked yeah, about. Yeah, probably. If I was in a startup draft, he would be the first tight end okay. I would draft. Over Kelsey. Uh, DJ Moore? Yep, just the matchup is good. The targets are good. Yeah, every, everything is there for DJ Moore. He's just had a couple down games. He he should I, – I, I don't know your guys' start of the weeks, but he should be someone's because I think he's – he's get, like we said, the target market share is there and there's more context that goes in. Well, one of the pieces of context is also the matchup, and it's a good matchup. Yep. It's scary, though, to hear the team constantly say we're going to do less with Sam Darnold because like, doing more with him is equated to three interceptions and one interception – What's his touchdown total over the last three games, Sam Darnold? I I'll look it up, but yeah, I, I have, think they have. I think they're averaging like yeah, one, he's got one two, touchdown a game, two passing touchdowns and five interceptions over the last three games. And you would have seen Philly, Minnesota, and New York as um, Atlanta level smash matchups. That's the crazy thing about Darnold himself. Yeah, mm -hmm. they did the the Carolina Panthers last week. They scored three points. That's the end of the story. Mm -hmm, three. That's not good for fantasy. The Miami Dolphins at 1-6 and six take on the 4-2 and two Buffalo Bills in Buffalo. The Bills just lost to the Titans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has the Bills oh. comfortable 13.5-point oh. oh. favorites. Oh, my. Over-under is 49.5. I actually, in our, uh, we do like a weekly uh, pick stuff mm -hmm. around the office. I did take Miami. This is not an almost upset of the week. This is simply that's a lot of points. Thirteen and a half spread. points is a lot. You would not have got it in week two when the Bills destroyed them thirty five to nothing. No, no. But uh was wasn't two out at that point? Second uh, week? Second Maybe not. Week? I don't think so. He should he he should have skipped it. Uh if he wasn't. Josh Allen, he's a lock. Stephon Diggs, absolutely um, the Miami defense is ranked 30th against opposing wide receivers. That's why Emmanuel Sanders um, 
is a very strong play today. Any interest, I've seen it out there, Tommy Sweeney, the only... Sweeney Tom? <laughs> oh, Sweeney Tom. Uh, very nice. The The Dolphins can't defend any of the positions, so, you know, Dawson Knox is out. Is there any chance you'd take a, a, a shot on Sweeney Tom? DFS price will be rock bottom floor, but if you're in a, you know, you're talking about your fantasy league, no. There, there are better stronger options than than taking that flyer also 12 career receptions for <laughs> yeah. Sweeney's home going back to week Scored two last week right uh, that's true he did uh going back to week two uh that blowout that was the game Tua got injured in so he did not play the majority of that game uh Zach Moss Devin Singletary what do fantasy managers do with these two guys I both of them are probably in play in this game with with a spread saying you're <laughs> they're projecting you to win by about two touchdowns. That's going to turn into some opportunity uh, opportunities for both of them and, and scoring opportunities. So I prefer. I mean, I guess I still prefer Moss, but it was it, it was very fifty fifty the last time we saw him. Yeah, I mean this this is I I prefer Moss. I would put Moss in ahead of Singletary, but you're right. Um, the beginning of the game, especially, was more Singletary. I, this is one of those games where I think you can start literally every bill you can get your hands on because I, I would start Cole Beasley. Uh, you know, yeah, the, he's probably fine. The, the Miami dolphins have just, they've given up a ton of fantasy points. It's, uh, they, they tend to do enough as a team to make sure the other team can keep scoring um, and do nothing on defense to stop them from doing so. He had nine targets last week, obviously Emmanuel Sanders, Stephon Diggs, uh, Josh Allen are in, but I, I'm I, when you can play a third wide receiver and a second running back, you know, that team's going to win. Miles Gaskin. Yeah, you see a start in a brutal matchup against the Bills just because of volume. You know, now you have Malcolm Brown out on IR. Yeah, that does make it easier for fantasy. Gaskin seems to be on a kind of every other schedule. Uh, but the fact that Malcolm Brown's not there to take a handful of opportunities away, it it's going to be split, I think, between Gaskin and Ahmed. Uh, but Gaskin should do enough in the passing game. Miami has the highest pass rate in the NFL. Yeah, it's wild, man. So Jalen Waddle, Devontae Parker potentially, um, uh, Mike Gesicki. Gesicki, yes. Gesicki has to Is be. Is that it. the only lock in the receiver room? He's the, he's the only lock, but uh, the Waddle you can flex. Yeah, I, I, that's that's the way I see it as well. And and Gaskin should probably be in your lineup. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll change that pick. Get right game for Buffalo after that tough loss at home. Off the bye. Horrible Dolphins team. Maybe I should, I should pivot that one. <laughs> uh, the San Francisco 49ers at 2-4 and four take on the Chicago Bears at 3-4. and four. The DK Sportsbook line is the 49ers. Uh, well, what is the most recent line, Brooksy? Because I'm not seeing one in here. The over-under is 39.5, which is a, a disgusting over-under. But what do we have as the most recent line for the – for the ball game. One sec. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe it, it's a – Obviously. Maybe on the road. It's 49ers like by four points. On the road? On yes, the sir. Road. Wow. By four. I mean, this is an indictment on that is, that Justin is Fields. That's terrible. That's, that's what it is. This is saying that they don't believe that the Bears can get to 20 points. Um, the San Francisco 49ers are not a great defense, but the Bears offense has done literally nothing. I think I shared on Spotify. Their running Green game has taken care of business. Last night. Yeah, Khalil Herbert's been great. And for fantasy, um, I, I certainly think you can continue to start him. He's just been – He's an RB1 the last two weeks. Yeah, he's just been great. But the offense as a whole, that that's it. That's the end of the list. Um. Justin Fields is on a 17-game pace of six total passing touchdowns. Did you see the play, the Allen Robinson play from last week where he broke open and there wasn't a defender within yeah, and, 20 and, yards in the middle of the field? And Fields didn't see him. And Justin Fields like mm -hmm. pumped fake, pump faked or thought the referee was a DB or something, and it just made my heart sad. Mm -hmm. for yep. Allen. There are rumors that Allen Robinson may be given a reprieve from this situation and shipped off mm -hmm. somewhere else. You got a week to do it. Find a new home, eh, Rob? That would be a would you, huge if, transaction for so another team. A ton, a ton of leagues had Allen Robinson hit the waiver wire. And he, you know what I mean? But now with the rumors of a potential trade, would you 
Would you pick them up? A, uh, a Sunday stash. Sunday stash. Sunday stash. All right. Um, number one start seat question on the website right now involves Khalil Herbert wanting to know if they should start him or Elijah Mitchell. Oh. So the same game, Elijah Mitchell on the other side. Jason, you love him this week. I do. Um, but Herbert, over the last three games, to add to your point, he has 272 rushing yards, only behind Derrick Henry and Jonathan Taylor. That's how good Khalil Herbert has been. That's so crazy. Uh, I th man, <laughs> they came in half of half of that game against Tampa Bay, which is an unstoppable rush defense. It I, makes no sense. I think I lean Khalil Herbert. That's where I lean. Uh, it, it just because both of, are good plays. He, yes, I really like Elijah Mitchell too. But Khalil Herbert, if anyone's going to get the opportunity near the goal line, it would be Herbert. Where uh, on the San Francisco side, yeah, Mitchell scored last week because he was he, he got the uh, he was scored from a little bit out. There's no guarantee that it's going to be Mitchell inside the five. It could easily be Jamichael Hasty. Hasty's coming in with a lot of third down work. So I lean Herbert slightly over Mitchell. Yeah, I, I I totally understand that. He's looked great. Both of these players have looked phenomenal. I think that if the game last week wasn't as rainy and soggy a mess um, for the San Francisco 49ers game, that Elijah Mitchell would have had an even bigger day. This was a really knockdown, drag out, gross game for the Niners last week, and he still had over 100 yards and a touchdown. I, I think Elijah Mitchell is going to be – Really, really strong for um, for a run of games here. Debo Samuel yep. uh, should be active. We talked about number one in target share, performing each and every week. Brandon Ayuk, you know, let's let's do our weekly excuse. The Ayuk <laughs> excuse. Kyle Shanahan this week says that maybe adding more muscle for the 2021 season has actually been a negative. Oh, he's too strong. Too strong. Get him off the field. Um you know, we glossed over the, and, and I know it's not an issue, Debo Samuel's going to be fine, but just seeing Debo Samuel pop up with a calf problem that wasn't there, he has, he's not been getting rest days, is just scary because of who Debo Samuel is. And I really want Debo Samuel to play because the worst thing that could ever happen is Debo to be gone, George Kittle to be gone, and Trent Sherfield has himself a game. I will die. <laughs> Cause uh, you, cause you know it won't be Ayuk. Yeah, but Ayuk's <laughs> in the doghouse, man. If 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 you looked the wrong way at Kyle Shanahan, just find a new team. Maybe this all comes back to the key that we've realized the Rams deal with, which is breakfast. Maybe, maybe Brandon Ayuk and, and Bring Shanahan a bagel, bro. <laughs> um, for what it's worth, Trey Lance returned to practice. Kyle Shanahan did come out and say, like, playing bad. I mean, this is his comment. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, he said that, you know, the team doing poorly does not mean that they're going to put Trey Lance into the game if it jeopardizes Lance's development for the future. Um, but we'll see what happens with Jimmy G and company. You know, the four, most, the four most disappointing teams in the NFL this year compared to expectations, Miami Dolphins, Washington football team, Seattle Seahawks, and then the San Francisco 49ers. Um, and so... You know, you can say a lot of things, but if you're sitting at, I don't know, three and nine, things might change. Uh, but in terms of other options in this game... There's there, three players you play, and then you move on. You play Khalil Herbert, Elijah Mitchell, and Debo Samuel. Okay. Pittsburgh at three and three, take on the four and three Cleveland Browns. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Browns minus three and a half at home, over under 42. So we're going from a, a 39 and a half to a 42... Not great for fantasy generally when, when the points aren't going up on the board. You know, this game has some locks. Najee Harris, always. Mm -hmm. Nick Chubb, always, mm -hmm. if he's active. And then Deontay Johnson, always. Agreed. Uh, beyond that, it gets really, really murky in a game with a low over under. Two pretty stout defenses. I think the Steelers defense showed me in the last matchup that they are going to take a step forward like they often do over the course of the year, the same way Baltimore has. Or at least seem when to. You've got a great coach. That's what happens. They they make adjustments and they. Is that the USC head coach that you're talking about? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh man, I love Mike Tomlin so much. Um, but he is a great coach. Their team, you know, is always this this team right now is like shouldn't be 500, and they are. Um, the the question is, I'm not de I'm not touching the the receiving game for the for the Browns. I don't know the health. I don't know who's going to be active and able enough. 
Dearness Johnson is a question, and I would rather bench him this week if Chubb is assuming Chubb is back, and see how much work he gets in that sure you De know makeshift Kareem Hunt role. Dearness or James Connor? James, James Connor. Connor. Okay, so not even close, really. Well, I I think the when you compare the Packers defense versus the Steelers run D, they're still uh, looks like they're seventh against the run. The Steelers. So what about P Ryan? Samaji P. Ryan or Dearness Johnson? I think P. Ryan That's is a, good a very good start this week, personally. Okay. okay. Are you starting? I don't have him anywhere. Oh, you don't? Oh, I just I, you I just actually did up. just pick him up. Um <laughs> I, I forgot I forgot that I, I got him on a cheap well, let, waiver. Let's do a little um you know, I know we've we got a big show here, but let's do a little deep dive here. I mean I look at your team, you got Oh, you don't have Samaji. Oh yeah, you do. You have Samaji P. Ryan yeah. and you're you you're looking I've at Alex got, Collins against Jacksonville. Yep, and so Alex Collins against Jacksonville is another player I really, really like this week. That would be the question is whether he would usurp Alex Collins. I can't do that because no, P. What about Ryan Devontae is still, Smith? P. Uh, P. Ryan is still the backup. Devontae Smith is a wide receiver. So. No, I know, but do you, you have flex spots. I mean, would you play Devontae Smith or Samaj P. Ryan? I would play Smith. Yeah, I'm going to stick with Smith. It's okay. a Jalen Hurts stack. Well, then maybe you need to like lowercase your really good start comment. Okay, that's fine. He's an okay start this week. <laughs> Uh, Steelers games have only hit the over one time this year. So if you're expecting an outlier of a Gross. game with a backup quarterback, and yes, when I say backup, I'm referring to Keenum, not Big Ben, but I could be referring to either. <laughs> oh. Uh, last question. Is the is the Muth Luth this week? The Muth is always Luth. <laughs> they have let him Luth, and he will be awesome. I, I'm is not the Muth saying Luth the rest of the season? The rest of his career. Yeah, I mean, it's, that is his name, so... Technically, he's always Luth. So when he was younger, and he lost a tooth, oh, he was a young lost a tooth. He was a young Luth man. Yeah, yeah. And when he gets a loose tooth. Yeah, a, yeah, a Luth tooth. <laughs> um, yeah, but the, I, the other the other uh, <laughs> name to bring up here is Chase Claypool, who I think is an okay start here. Yeah, you need monitor him because he was limited in uh, practice with that hamstring. So he's killed. The Browns in yes he has we, we might history. have another a uh, Ty Houston situation Ooh. on our hand with Claypool against uh, Cleveland Brown Town because his three games against him seventy four and a score one hundred one and a score fifty nine and two yeah uh, he has he has crushed them mm. Mm. so it's interesting all right the Eagles at two and five <laughs> head to Detroit the Lions are zero and seven the DraftKings sportsbook line. It's Eagles minus three and a half. Oh, no. Andy's almost upset of the week. If there's a team that knows about almost winning, it's the Detroit football Lions. Um, and for those that have joined the show f recently and are confused by that segment, um, I mean, it's kind of been a translation into basically an upset pick of the week, but yeah, but you get to hedge, but I get to hedge as long as <laughs> if it's an almost, I'm I'm still win the bet. Wouldn't that be nice if the sports books had the almost? Like, yeah, like you you started out strong, and so we're gonna give it to you. So neither team has been a favorite in their game. So this is the first time the Eagles are. I think Detroit will almost <laughs> no. We'll get the first win. I think it's gonna happen. I mean, Detroit has to look at the schedule. They're trying and say, so hard. There are only a few teams that <laughs> realistically they can beat, and the Eagles have to be one they're going after to try to get that win. You have no Miles Sanders. You have, uh, you know, Jalen Hurts playing bad. So no quarterback. There's been rumors about, you know, will he get benched at some point for um, Gardner Minshew, who obviously another team just came to the Eagles and traded for a backup quarterback. And they did not depart with Gardner, so you know they were like, "Oh yeah, you can have Flacco." So forty-eight point over under. We're improving here, moving forward. Um, you know, Dan Campbell, like you said, not a lot of games that you can win on the schedule. Came out last week, earned the respect of of NFL fans everywhere, going onside kicks and fake punts. Loved and, it. Um, you know, trick plays, and they worked. They got out to the ten point lead on the Rams. It stands to reason, look, if we're, if we're moving into a new generation in the NFL where we're going for it on fourth down, which we certainly are, like we are moving into a new era where fourth and three, fourth and four, fourth and five, these are happening, then then doing some of these trick plays, the, the fake punts, that makes sense too. 
Um, analytics man, triple espresso, Dan mm-hmm. Campbell. Jalen Hurts, though, you can always play him. I mean, if he's the starter for this team, he is the most consistent fantasy quarterback despite the fact that it comes, you know, 30% in the fourth quarter. He's great. I mean, he's great for fantasy purposes. Mm-hmm. He is currently the quarterback, Isn't he two, quarterback two yeah. on the season. Has never finished outside the quarterback, the top 10 so far on a week, and the Detroit Lions aren't going to shut him down. The Lions cannot stop the run. They are 29th against it this year, giving up 26.6 fantasy points. If we just throw that number on the other side of the ball and we say, hey, that running back room in Philadelphia, the Kenneth Gainwell, Boston Scott, and Jordan Howard show is going to combine for 26 fantasy points. You know, Mike, you like Gainwell to get the, the majority of it. Yeah, I I understand. We, we don't exactly know how the split is going to work. Boston Scott himself, he's interesting. He's interesting this to me this week where he came in and you know he was getting carries. Uh, I think they will it, use him. Yeah, I totally agree. Like Boston Scott, you can I think he's in flex consideration this week because the matchup against the Lions is it's good for fantasy running backs, but I do. I really like Gainwell as uh someone that he might even he might still be on your waiver wire and you can pick him up and put him in your lineup right away. Yeah, um, I, I agree with that. I think Devonta Smith and Dallas Goddard are good plays as well. The Lions aren't good against the run, but they're also not good against the pass. So I, I, it's pretty much a situation where you're finally excited to play your Eagles players. Um, that's where I'm at. And on the other side of the ball, this should be a good game for TJ Hawkinson. The Eagles have been pretty good against wide receivers. They're pretty bad against the tight end position. So um, I don't think that they're going to shut Hawkinson down. And since he's a player that's you know, probably already in your lineup. It's just a good matchup to see on paper. Yeah, you start him every week. He's the tight end six on the year. He's on pace for 92 receptions. So yeah. whether or not he scores a bunch, you take it. Where are you at, Andy, for uh, Jamal Williams, Jay Willie, this week? Is if, you, if you're projecting, you know, a close game, maybe the Lions even win this one, are you – inclined to flex Jamal Williams it's or hard. would you play I mean it's the same game or like so it's Boston just easy. Scott yeah or... would you go Boston or Jay Williams no, I'd, I'd play Jamal Williams ahead of Boston Scott I'd play Kenneth Gainwell ahead of Jamal Williams and okay. and we haven't seen Williams inside the top you know 36 in four weeks which is tough obviously Swift is dominant um in terms of you know just value fantasy wise in that backfield so I'd ignore the Detroit wideouts completely and I think that wraps that game up. Yeah, and I would agree with your order of the Gainwell, Boston, Scott, Jamal Williams. But as you said that, I thought, okay, that's this is where P. Ryan comes into play. Yeah. I would go Gainwell. <laughs> Over all of them? No, Gainwell for sure is is ahead. And then P. Ryan, Jamal okay. Williams, Boston, Scott. Right. The 5-2 and two resurgent Tennessee Titans. Unbelievable. Travel to Indianapolis. To face the resurgent mm-hmm. Indianapolis Colts, uh, who are three and four. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Colts minus one and a half. I'm excited about this game. The Me over-under too. is 51. It's a divisional matchup. Both teams are playing well. Like, you look at this on the surface, and your impulse is to say, well, the, the Titans should be favored, you know, because they've been they've been winning games. And the truth is, is like, you know, the Sportsbook, DK has it at Colts minus one and a half, and I think that's fair. I think the Colts are going to be competing in this game. The defense has looked a little bit better, and the one area they're strong in is the area that they need to be in this game, which is against the run. What's funny is the line opened with Indy minus one, then it shifted to Tennessee minus one, and now it's back to Indy. So this this is a game that I think football fans, regardless of fantasy, and the nice thing is there's a lot of fantasy in this game as well, but this is just an exciting game mm-hmm. for, for NFL action. I've seen Carson Wentz picked up by people in different leagues to stream this week. Yes. Ryan Tannehill is a good option with A.J. Brown and with Julio Jones right now, a uh, like second-half sleeper pick of mine on yesterday's show. You know, A.J. Brown, lock him in. Agreed. Michael Pittman. Is I love Michael Pittman this week in particular, and I you know as one who has uh, a I, I wouldn't I don't know if I'm the mayor of Pity City, but I'm I'm on the, on the I'm, council I'm on the council yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, one, I'm in the governing body yeah, of, yeah I mean you're running of, for mayor of, of Pity <laughs> City I, mean, I yeah vote you for got me. signs up all over <laughs> vote for me uh, is Michael Pittman is he is is he a weekly lock for you guys now? 
I don't view him as an absolute weekly lock. He's so but, okay. close to it. He is okay. very, very All right. close. All I, right. I think if there was a you know a, a tough matchup, you, you might you might look elsewhere. But this isn't one. This is one where he is locked into a starting role this week. He's been great for several weeks. Targets are going up. The you know he's you, out there on every snap. Yeah, and, and they're using him the way that we finally wanted to see him utilized like an alpha. And in this divisional matchup against, I mean, goodness gracious, the, the Titans give up how many? 39.8 fantasy points per game and half point scoring to the wide receiver position. That's a lot. It's goodness. not all T.Y. Hilton. No, sir. Not much of it. Um, so Hilton might not even play. Uh, Julio Jones or would you go with Pittman? Pittman. Mm -hmm. okay. I would too. Uh, and A.J. Brown's locked in. Henry, of course. Jonathan Taylor's been amazing. Uh, any other question marks in this game for you in terms of, you know, you dart throwing Mo Alley Cox in a bad tight end matchup? Are you no, I don't, Naeem I don't, Hines? I don't think so. Not Hines, not, uh, not the tight ends. Uh, Gigantor could sit this one out. I think this one's pretty straightforward. You've got your big names, and you're hoping this doesn't turn into one of those divisional slug fests that are just brutal but that it turns into the divisional like back and forths that are beautiful. The Bengals, AFC leaders, 5-2 and two against the New York Jets at 1-5. and five. The DK Sportsbook line, Bengals minus 10.5. Over-under is 43. It's low, but with a line like that, that gives the Bengals 27 points. Uh, the Jets at 16. If you have the Bengals defense, I want to congratulate you and those around you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mike White, Michael Carter, Corey Davis and company are heading your way. And you should rejoice because the number one seed in the AFC is going to have a nice time handling the one and five Jets this week. Yeah, they they really are. And to speak to Pirine now, finally. Yes. Um, you're the mayor of. Uh, <laughs> oh, don't don't you put that on me. Is that P City? Uh, oh. <laughs> oh no! No, no who's, that's who's who's the the mayor's Philip Rivers? Are you yeah, me? that's right. Um, so here, here's here's the deal. The last couple of years, we have constantly seen some of these really, really, really bad teams that don't give up a lot through the air because they give up so much on the ground. And the the Jets are one of those where it's like, man alive, you, you think it's just a good matchup for everyone. Um, and if like T Higgins had 15 targets last week. T. Higgins is seems like just a great play against an easy Jets. I would be scared of someone like T. Higgins because sure. the reason that he got 15 targets is because they're throwing the ball. But you're not throwing the ball if you're up, you know, 28 to 5. No. Well, they're not getting 5 because they're not getting a safety. 28 to 6. Um, they missed the extra point? Yes. No, that's two field goals. Oh, okay. You think yeah. the Jets got a touchdown? Um, so that's where I think at the end of this game, you could see a fourth quarter of P. Ryan. You could just see a, uh, you know, a lot of rushing attempts here. P. Ryan or Michael Carter, Mike? Michael Carter. Last week he had 20 opportunities? Yeah, the, the snaps went way up for Carter. Tevin Coleman was uh, was out of this game. He's Inactive. Yeah, I, and he, I think he's banged up. Uh, but also, like... The Jets are uh, unfortunately at the part of their season where, yeah, they're still trying to win, but you got to you got to figure out what do you have in in someone like Michael Carter. You took him in the fourth round, twenty opportunities, a season high seventy two percent of the snaps, uh, and and part of that opportunity share was nine targets, and that's like Mike White came in and he through to the running backs with Michael Carter and Ty Johnson. I will yeah. say this is a more of this is kind of unrelated to the the immediate context, but I have not been personally very impressed with Michael Carter, the runner, like on film. I don't know if you guys share that view or different. He or well, it, you look at him where he was pretty strong on the ground in week 2, but other than that in his opportunities, he's, you know, a, uh, he's running for three and a half yards per carry on the season. Like, like if they had Draft to kill a Herbert, that would have been a better decision. Yeah, probably. Based on how they're running, based on film, it, it would seem that way. But um, And I guess you're right because I was going to say, you know, you put Khalil Herbert on the Jets might be a different story. But, I mean, I bet Michael Carter would do better over on the Bears. Um, so it, they've got equally bad situations here. Obviously, uh, lock in Burrow, Mixon, lock in Jamar Chase, and mm -hmm. then CJ Uzama. It, it's, you could – you could do worse this week. The, the Jets are 25th against opposing fantasy tight ends, and yeah, they I mean he's going to get up. a he's going to get a few receptions. I mean, hopefully, he scores. 
Yeah, I think that's exactly right. The Rams at six and one take on the Texans at one and six. The DK Sportsbook line: the Rams minus fourteen and a half. The over under is forty seven and a half. The game's in Houston. Um, Stafford locked. Henderson locked. Cup. Yep. Really? Uh, Cup is just. I, a- <laughs> I, I gave it some thought this morning. Yeah. I was on the fence. He's so um, good. I've been diving deep. <laughs> into Tyler the- Higby. Yeah. You like Higby? I do like Higby. Higby or Tunyon tonight? Higby. Higby. Really? Yeah. You're both. It's just the uh, Texans equation? Uh, yes, sir. Hey, I'll chase the matchup. After the Zach Ertz explosion, which followed a what? Another explosion and all, yes. all yeah, players I mean, that play the Texans? They are one of the worst teams at guarding the tight end position, and the, that's usually a pretty sticky stat at this point in the season. Mm. Uh, Higby's been a good tight end. You know, it, he has not been what we hoped he would be because Cooper Cup just too good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's certainly involved in the offense, and when they get around the goal line, the Texans will forget that he exists. I was asking for a friend on that Tunyon Higby decision, and I, I see I've been on very the selfish. Yeah, very selfish. Robert Woods, do you sure. should play. <laughs> Is that the new like his new tagline? Sure. Uh. Yeah, I mean, if you've got – Robert Woods is one of those, like, I would bench him for Michael Pittman. Um, if you've got, you know, another good option, um, you could see this game going similar to the previous game where it's like they don't need a ton in the passing game, um, and Robert Woods could kind of disappear. But he's been solid. You know, you the, the last – month he's been a wide receiver three or better in every single week so in general he is a, a startable asset robert woods or marvin jones marvin jones taking on seattle i think i would go marvin jones robert woods or chase claypool against cleveland that would be chase a- cleveland <laughs> Chase, Cle- Chase oh. Cleveland. I mean, it's right there. Yeah. Cle- T.Y. Houston Clay- and Chase Cle- Claypool. Hey, we didn't get there till now. I- Claypool, you better you better come through. Uh. I went with Browntown. <laughs> yeah, that Chase was a weird Cleveland. choice. <laughs> um, no, I think I would go Chase Cleveland there. Oh my gosh, uh, I'm benching every Texan, hundred percent of them, including Brandon Cooks. Thoughts? <laughs> uh, I. You're now in the position to have to argue for a Texan. Go. Okay. Uh, is it possible that Tyrod Taylor is back for this game? Then okay, probably not. If he is, that changes it going up against. Yeah, I mean the Rams. Uh, the, the, Rams the Rams are allowing not, points. I was gonna say the Rams have not been a shutdown defense. I do. Uh, they're they're not. I don't believe they're shadowing um, with Ramsey. Ramsey's kind of moved inside a little bit. They're using him in a better way, I think. But uh, Brandon Cooks will get enough targets. Um, from what I understand, he's got like a thirty percent target market <laughs> share outside the top fifty in three of the last four games for Brandon Cooks. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not I'm not standing on a soapbox here saying you have to start Brandon Cooks. I would, um, I would start Robert Woods over Brandon Cooks in this game. Okay, I was gonna ask that. Yeah. All right, all of our rankings, the start sit tools on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. We'll have more matchups tomorrow. But first, starts of the week. I'm gonna let one of you guys go first. Go okay. ahead, Jay. I shall start. Uh, I'm going to start a quarterback with Ryan Tannehill against Indy, uh, Indianapolis. I think that uh, he's going to have a good game. Indianapolis has been pretty good on the ground and pretty bad through the air. Tannehill, uh, his games hit the over 70% of the time when he's under center. We're still waiting for that three-touchdown game. I think this is the week now that he's got Julio back healthy. A.J. Brown we saw dominating, and and you could end up with a screen to Derrick Henry. I I like Tannehill. Um, I liked him coming into this season. Then I'll obviously injuries and other things kind of derailed the beginning. But the same way that we talked about AJ Brown uh, last night on Spotify Green Room, the fact that once he got going last year, he was the wide receiver three from that point on. I think Tannehill keeps chugging and is a good start this week. And I want to throw out the, this name because we haven't really talked about him this week, but Teddy Bridgewater is in a very good situation. He's taking on the Washington football team and Washington has surpassed Kansas City as the best matchup for quarterbacks. I don't know what has happened over there in Washington, but you play your quarterbacks against them. They've given up top eight, top eight points to the quarterback position in six straight weeks. Jerry Judy is expected to be back. Teddy Bridgewater has had multiple touchdowns in each of his last three games. The volume is there. He's a very interesting play this week. I'm going to go Kirk Cousins against Dallas. Cousins is a a great quarterback, and when they need him to be elite, that's what he can do. 
with these weapons. Um, three top six performances on the year, off the bye week, Sunday night game with the highest over-under of the week, and um, Cousins is going to smash in this one. Yeah. At Although right, prime time. People are afraid of the prime time. Now, let me tell you this, Andy. We'll see if this messes up your star of the week. In our Dynasty League, I am starting Kirk Cousins. Oh, no. And Daniel Jones is on my bench. Well, oh. then who gave you that good advice? Because it couldn't have been your decision. I it was, He was already in before you had him in the start of the week. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. Right. Watch <laughs> out. Watch out. <laughs> prime time plus in Mike's lineup? Okay. New <laughs> information. Fire <Buyer> beware. <laughs> Pivot. Pivot. Why don't you give us your wide receiver, Jason? Uh, well, because I was all prepped for my running back. <laughs> That's well, why. I, but the, the wide receiver ties in. All right, fine. I'll talk about my wide receiver, Adam Thielen. Uh, Adam Thielen. Not prepped for this. <laughs> Alert. <laughs> Adam Thielen um, against Dallas. The last time that he played against Dallas, week 11 last year, 8 for 1, 23 and 2. He's been very, very good. In fact, Thielen has the highest quarterback rating when targeted on this team, even better than Jefferson. So I, I do like this game. I think this game, uh, despite primetime, despite Mike's uh, fantasy luck, this year, I, I, I expect it to be a higher scoring game. And those are where Adam Thielen, when he's necessary, he comes through. He's he's a very good wide receiver. He's had a lot of big games. And if you want to look for a multi-touchdown game, I think Adam Thielen's your guy. And I'm going with Michael Pittman. Uh, all are welcome. What? All are welcome in Pity City. Look, he's he's got the target share. He has the catch uh, percentage as well. He's He is full on mossing people out there on the field. He looks like a number one guy. Carson Wentz has a, a quarterback rating of 116 when he targets him. So maybe we should throw the ball to Pittman even more. And on top of that, the matchup against Tennessee is just the absolute juiciest. So I'm, I want Pittman everywhere I can. I'm going to go Emmanuel Sanders against Miami. Since week three, he's averaged 16.3 fantasy points per game. That is the wide receiver 11. Miami plays the most man coverage in the NFL, and it ain't working. Um, they have given up the second most passing yards and the most 20-plus yard plays, and Sanders has been so involved down the field. I don't think uh, – Jason might have said this on the Green Room show. It is very much in Josh Allen's, you know, uh, going through the reads or, or scrambling, making a play happen. He is not digs only. I mean, he's digs or Sanders. So – uh, I think it's a great smash matchup for Sanders, and he's going to keep doing what he's been doing. Oh, man, since week three, I just had to look this up. Since week three, the number one wide receiver for the, the Bills is not Stephon Diggs. It's Emmanuel yep. Sanders. So um, I, I do like that name. Uh, at running back, super prepared, it's Elijah Mitchell. Um, I'm firing up the missile this week. I, I think what we saw last week was that he's the dude for the Kyle Shanahan system. Uh, once you peg it, uh, and, and you know, coming into this year, we were all wrong. It was, oh, Trey Sermon's going to yeah. be great. Oh, Brandon Ayuk's going to be great. No, but the whoever. I believe I said Raheem Mostert. Most, <laughs> sure, Raheem Mostert. Mostert but, would be smashing right oh, now. Oh, for sure. Uh, but when you are picked by King Shanahan, <laughs> um, he, he, he utilizes you a lot. Um, he's getting 16 rushing attempts per game, 63% of the snaps. He looks great doing it, and Chicago's giving up the seventh most rushing yards. Um, he's also running routes. He has not been really targeted yet, but don't be surprised if he adds a couple receptions on here because he is out there doing the thing necessary. He's not just the first or second down back that doesn't run routes. Mike? It's Kenny Gainwell. Kenneth Gainwell, you know, either way you want to say it, I think he's a great play Detroit uh, giving up the fourth most fan points to the running back position in fantasy football. We're not exactly sure, again, how the split is going to work with Boston, but the team has faith in, in Gainwell, as as they've already proven from the beginning of the season. He will get some red zone touches. He's going to be a pass catcher, and the matchup says that Gainwell from the waiver wire to your starting lineup. My start of the week at running back is Joseph Mixon against the Jets. Last week, Damian Harris, Brandon Bolden, and J.J. Taylor combined for over 60 fantasy points against the Jets. Most rushing touchdowns given up. Highest rush rate inside the 10-yard line. Mixon, this is a top five performance he should be, uh, yeah. for Joe Mixon in a game where the game script is making Jason recommend Samaj P. Ryan. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, I don't want to play P. Ryan ever, but the game is so good that I'm like, 
Maybe even the backup running back is good. The starting running back? Heck yeah, Joe Biggs go smash. Um, at tight end, I'm going with Tyler Higby. <laughs> okay. Um, Tyler Higby, we've already talked about it in the matchup, but Houston is bad. Remember the quote last week from Zach Ertz talking about how he's never seen so much open grass on the mm -hmm. field. He credited the, the Cardinals wide receiving uh, core around him, but also – Credit credit should be given to the Houston yeah. Texans for leaving him wide open and then barely chasing him to tackle him. Uh, Higby can do that in the open field, down around the goal line. Um, the Texans forget about tight end. So I, I just really think Tyler Higby is one of those, when you're looking at who's going to get the touchdown at, at tight end, it's Higby. We're due for a multi-touchdown game from him. I agree. And my streaming tight end this week, I'm going with Evan Ingram from the New York <sighs> Giants. And look – Jason's don't do it. Jason's sound. It says it all. Kansas City has surrendered top nine points. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't blame you. Kansas City has surrendered top nine points to the tight end position in five of seven games. The New York Giants. Uh, we're projecting that they will be lacking weapons. They're very beat up at the wide receiver position. There. It. You want to throw in a narrative? There are trade rumors swelling about Evan Engram. Maybe you have one last. Hurrah to maximize the value, but the matchup, the the lack of uh, of healthy weapons for New York in a game, the Giants are going to have to score points. This isn't where they can sit on the ball with Devontae Booker and run out the clock. Any change of opinion if they do get some of their weapons back, Tony, Shepard, any of those It, it guys? definitely lowers the, the odds, but Evan Ingram, will, he, should, he won't kill you. Uh, that's and that may be the highest price he's received. I'm, I'm going to guess his finish line: twenty targets, <laughs> five receptions, forty six yards, and no touchdowns. I hate Evan Ingram so much. Not the man, the player. <laughs> you know, last week with with no one around, it was eight targets. It turned into six for forty four, which is six for forty four off the waiver wire at the tight end position. Is that's fine. Hunter Henry. Okay. I'm I'm staying in the. He's uh, on fire. I mean, four four games in a row with the score. Not to mention the fact, like Johnny Smith got hurt. Yeah, he's banged like, up. Like Hunter Henry is becoming more and more reliable for Mac Jones. Um, this is Hunter's revenge against the Chargers as well. Uh, the Chargers they have decided not to cover the tight end position. It's just one of the things they've opted out of this year. Uh, they're allowing the second most tight end. Fancy points behind Houston, second highest tight end target share percentage. Um, this is a smash play. They've given up games seven for 104 to Kelsey, four for 50 and one to Waller. Njoku went seven for 149 and one against them. Mark Andrews scored against them. Like, if there's a prop bet on Hunter Henry getting into the end zone, like I would, I would take it this week because they are contractually required to give up one to the tight end position. That so. is fair. And now let's uh, tune in to me. Uh, <laughs> naked on a ship. Jason Moore's ironclad, locked and loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom, kicker of the week. With butt cheeks freezing, <laughs> I grabbed some pants, size 39. They were cutoff jeans worn by the Cowboys' Greg Zerline. <laughs> I want to know what rider's helping you this year. Oh, because I've got my secrets. Yeah, you have to have somebody helping. This it's, is not the same source material. It's fabulous. It's great work. And honestly, the only thing that is missing mm -hmm. is I need a last week. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> last <laughs> week on Boom Boom Kicker. <laughs> so wait, to be clear, Greg Zerline's the suggestion there with your butt cheeks. Yes, I would, I would use Greg Zerline. And he wears uh, cutoff jorts. Apparently. I mean, I mean that's what I, when I found uh, them there on the too. freighter. Oh, yeah, you're on a ship. Yeah. Your butt cheeks are on a ship. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, not uh, anymore. I covered them with Greg Zerloin's uh, jorts. Zerloin? <laughs> Zerloin, yes. <laughs> we want to thank Pristine Auction. Jonathan Taylor signed jersey just sold for, six. well, it's up there right now, $60.90. Ends on Tuesday of next week. Elijah Mitchell signed jersey, 50 bucks up there right now. There's hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions from our friends at Pristine Auction. Use the code. Ballers and get a ten dollar credit. What if we just fire Al Borland? Because at that point, it's an employee event, and he doesn't have to come. Done. Pack oh. your things. Lock it up. Sorry, Owl. 
See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Come on, Al. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.